Good afternoon to Michael Barrymore. Hi, Simon. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And how are you? I'm not too bad at all. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to talk to you. Uh, mm -hmm. We spoke to your ex-wife on the programme uh, towards the end of last year. Yeah. Uh, you'll be aware she had a book out. Did you read it? Uh, no, no, I didn't read the book at all. Um, Do you know pretty much the area that it covered? Well, I, I saw a couple of uh, things that she did. I didn't actually watch, watch the whole thing. I found it very difficult to uh, Obviously, yeah. sit and uh, listen to uh, what she was saying, which, um, which wasn't true. Well, um, I made a note of quite a few of the things that she did mm. say on the programme, and uh, I'll get your side of the story in a number of areas mm -hmm. fairly shortly. Uh, obviously, a lot of our conversation will revolve around uh, the events of March 2001 and what yeah. uh, happened to Stuart Lubbock. Yeah. So can we start with that? We'll get to your um, recollection. I know you've talked a lot about what happened or your version of what happened on the night, but mm -hmm. you are unhappy with the inquest verdict and some of the things that were said around that. You think that there is enough evidence that has come forward which suggests there should be a new inquest. Can you explain why? Well, absolutely, because um, the evidence that we've already sent to the police, and they say they are um, putting an officer on it, um, categorically, without any shadow of a doubt, that no injuries whatsoever happened to um, Stuart at the house. There's two ambulancemen that took him to the um, hospital, uh, so saw no injuries. Uh, the whole, there was eight uh, on the team, and Stuart Nairn, who actually did the... Um, um, thermometer readings, the rectal thermometer readings had a clear sight of Stuart the whole time through the whole operation uh, of trying to re revive him for the two hours. Uh, his boxer shorts and no blood whatsoever. Sure, we, we ought to, uh, to specify here that uh, we're talking about the significant anal bruising. That's right, yeah. That, that was talked yeah, This about, is yeah. where all the attention went, this mm -hmm. is where all the attention went on to, and was that not actually dealt with at the inquest? I mean, the, the police said that they couldn't find Stuart Nairn to give evidence at the inquest. And yet, Stu Stuart Nairn being the nurse? Yeah, the nurse who, who, who the, the, in charge and, and the other nurses who gave statements. There were statements uh, that were given in June, just after that period of time, which we didn't have sight of till a year later, um, which made it quite clear uh, why uh, the police arrested two people on suspected uh, murder and then, without any explanation, uh, dropped the um, charges. And then when you read the statements of all the nurses, everybody said there was no injuries to him whatsoever when he arrived at A&E, uh, and during the whole time that they worked on him, you can see why they dropped the charges. But then no investigation was taken any further. He was left for seven to eight hours before the pathologist saw him. When the pathologist opened him up, there were these horrific injuries. Mm -hmm. And I mean horrific. So much so that, in fact, that Stuart Nairn states that he would not have been able to get um, a reading from the thermometer uh, on, on injuries that wide. So your contention is that the injuries could have been caused by the thermometer? No. No, I'm not saying that. That initially was asked, and they said not by the thermometer. The, 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 the thermometer, the only time he saw any blood, he gave 17 insertions to get a reading. That means he clearly has to uh, part the buttocks and, and have a clear sight to get a reading, get an anal reading. That's how they do it. That's, I mean, I know as much as what I've been told. Okay. I've never been involved in that before. And the only time he had a sight of anything was a tiny bit at the end. He made a report to the other nurse. There's a nurse there noting everything. And she gave concern as to what she was uh, reading in the papers uh, about these injuries, which she saw none of, and she was told not to worry, it was probably just tabloid talk. Now, uh, he's, he's now sat there for seven to eight hours uh, uh, when they're finished and they couldn't revive him. And then when the pathologist opens him up, these injuries are suddenly there. There, there's, there is absolutely no way, there's no DNA, there's no blood at the pool, there's no blood on his boxer shorts. The shorts were removed from him when he arrived at the, uh, at, the, at the hospital. You can't just suddenly, you know, invent these in injuries all of a sudden. So it, it must have happened in the time, from the time that they're finished with him, up until the pathologist opened him up. And yet four pathologists agreed that the injuries, were, that the injuries occurred before death. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. For it, we spoke to Professor Christopher Milroy yeah. this morning, Home Office pathologist, no, that carried was, out the second post mortem yeah. on Stuart Lubbock, and he said to us that the only way that these injuries could have been caused after death would have been by the thermometer. That's according to Professor Milroy, and he told us that no, four pathologists just, that, agreed that yeah. the injuries occurred 
before death. Yeah, they're, they're, they're assumptions that they made. They're all they're saying well, this they're could the, have happened. They're the pathologists. Yeah, and they're saying that this could have happened, that could have happened. None of them actually agreed on any one thing. Well, one, they, 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 they couldn't they, agree they, on the cause of death, but they no. all agreed that the injuries occurred before death. But the thing is, Simon, that you, you've got to remember that you've got one of them saying that he wouldn't have been able to walk with those sort of injuries. If that's the case, how was he walking and how did he get into the pool? Uh, Professor Milroy also... Well, why is there no blood? Why is there no blood? Uh, why is there no blood at the pool or in the pool or anything around there at all? Why is there no blood on the boxer shorts? Professor Milroy told us that he, as far as he was concerned, that one reason for that may be the low temperature of the body and that once the body was warmed up and resuscitation techniques used... Uh, on Stuart Lubbock that the blood may have started to flow again. That that, no. that that was his opinion. Well, that was his opinion, and then there was a different an opinion given by other pathologists that that couldn't be the case. Well, they, they were talking against each other the whole way. And the last person that saw him was one of the girls. It's very, you know, all this, uh, uh, the tabloid uh, trial by media, which is what happened, it, you know, it was an inquest that turned into, started to turn into a trial. That's what sort of happened. Um, uh, conveniently left out the fact that there was three girls at the uh, party as well. Stuart was not touched in any way whatsoever. He went into the pool, and the last person, which I didn't know to myself uh, until the day that was, uh, was uh, one of the girls who was uh, throwing the cat backwards and forwards, and he was saying, come into the pool. And that was the last girl who saw him. Is if, 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 if these injuries had taken place, why did, why did the police not uh, charge anybody? Well, you know, if, if somebody's responsible, they should be mm. charged and should be put away for sure. it, including myself if I, was, if I was guilty of it. I'm not guilty of anything. And I've had to have had this onslaught, this re relentless onslaught uh, by uh, various um, tabloids who went down the line because it suited them to say... Oh, you know, this is the perfect thing. Mm. Somebody famous, swimming pool, death, and added on all these anal injuries and gay orgy, gay sex. Uh, what else was there? Um, House of Horror. Uh, headlines uh, by one of the tabloids. You are a killer against myself. Do I you mean, have any, Do you have any medical experts who back up your version of events to go against these pathologists? Yeah, well, do, what, do, do we have any medical? Mm. We, yeah. we have. Uh, we've got a five-page. Uh, um, statement made out that the, the, the fact that shows that the injuries could not have taken place at the house without me going through the actual sure. papers now I mean they can go through them I've got them no. they've been presented to the police and the police have said the, the, the new chief inspector said he's put somebody on the case to investigate nobody's investigated the possibility of what happened after he was left Stuart Nan's evidence though was available to the inquest but it wasn't read out it wasn't read out but Presumably, it was there for the, the coroner yeah, well, to look at and yeah, consider. But I can't control the coroner, can I? I can't tell her what to do. I'm just saying that his evidence was there. Maybe he considered it. And like Professor Milroy here said, well, actually, I'm um, with the pathologist. I think the injuries did occur before death. Well, it's not the case. You uh, why, why, why would, it, why would, it be, why would it, we be, uh, be fighting to clear that situation up? I'm clearing that situation up because it didn't happen. You, talk, is, you talked about the other people at the party, and is um, well, uh, Can I just say something? Sure. Why, 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 is it, why does it have to stop there? Why does everybody throw their hands up in horror that it can't have happened at the hospital? Why does it, have, why does it stop there? I, I'm a pathologist, so I can't be wrong. That's what they're saying. But none of them actually totally agree with each other, if you read through all their evidence. And the other pathologists that were brought in did their evidence based on photographs. And based on, it could have been this, it might have been that, it could have been this. It's too many could-haves. You can't make... Uh, so if they want to support what they're saying, where are, where's the blood? This is the, the where, fact that there was no blood on the boxer shorts. That's... Yeah, so how could it be impossible? Absolutely. Where, where's the blood? The side of the pool have got tiles. They're all absorbent tiles, you know, to take, to take in the water around that pool. Mm -hmm. So where, 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 he was lying on the side long enough. Where's the, where, why isn't the blood there? And to say that the temperature, the temperature of the pool was up. And if, if the, the, anything did happen to him afterwards, it has been proved that even after death, bodies can bleed, even after they've been mm. pronounced dead. If, you know, 
there was an attack at that well, point. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm merely quoting to you the words of Professor Milroy. As, a, as I said, Home Office pathology, he carried out the second post-mortem, and in his opinion, uh, that the most likely reason for uh, the fact that there was no blood uh, and no bleeding was the fact that the body temperature was so low, and that when the body was warmed up, that that's when the blood would have become obvious. What, and he'd been into it from, from all the time, from the side of the pool, in the ambulance, and the two hours being worked that, on? That was what he told us. He also said that, in his opinion, you were entitled to seek a judicial review to ask for the inquest to be reopened, uh, but that even if the evidence was considered, he couldn't see how the verdict would be different. He said the reason that they came to an open verdict is that they can't see conclusively how Stuart Lubbock died. Three pathologists speculated on another cause of death rather than drowning, but essentially he doesn't think you're going to get a different verdict. Yeah, but, but, but the point is that what, what we're attempting to do is to uh, prove the fact that the anal injuries could not have happened at the house. That's got nothing to do with the verdict. We're talking about these anal injuries, they're, you know, are they saying that that's the reason he died? He died of drowning. But the anal injuries did not take place at that house. They can't, there is absolutely no way it could have taken place there. Nobody attacked him, nobody, uh, the, the, there was nothing happened. This is all, if, if, if that was the case, why didn't, why didn't the police pursue that, that line of inquiry? Hmm. Why didn't they go down that road? Is, is, isn't uh, a problem, obviously, for the Lubbock family and for the police and for yourself, is the fact that no one, no one apparently saw what happened. I can quote here from the Essex coroner, who said, not one of these witnesses who were party guests at this house for over three hours has given any explanation about how Stuart Lubbock, a fit 31-year-old, should have been found floating in the swimming pool with a significant level of alcohol and drugs in his system. And that's the problem. There appears to be a wall of silence from everyone who was there. No one saw anything. Well, it's not, if, if, if it's not a wall of silence. If they say they didn't see anything, the others said they came back in, back into the house. I was already in the house. When I went out, I discovered the body. I hadn't seen Stuart until the last time he went out there. So, you know, it's, why is it? It's not a wall of silence. If they say they didn't see him, and the girl, um, I can't remember her name, I think it's um, Kylie Marriott, said that she saw the last time he was throwing the hat in and he was quite happy and said, come into the pool. She said, it's too cold. So... So if, if you didn't see it and no one else did, how can we be sure what happened? How can you be so sure? Because if something happened, why, why was it? Surely there would have been a noise. Surely, I mean, it's all glass around. It's a one-level house. It's all glass around. So I can't believe that seven or eight people, they're all in different places, with a completely lit pool, can't see if there, if there, if there was an attack, which there wasn't, that they didn't see it or there wouldn't have been any noise. And the reports when they said there was screaming, there was no screaming from uh, anybody. The only times there was a scream was when the girls reacted when they saw Stuart at the side to being, trying to be revived. So, you know, there's, there's, there's no wall of silence. If you don't see something, you don't see something. If he was in the pool, if he, if he, he drowned, he drowned. But what I'm saying is the injuries did not take place at the house. Mm. And, 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 and I'm not going to give up on, on it until we find out all the inquiry is taken further and, and at least investigated as to what happened from the hospital onwards before the pathologist opened, opened up Stuart to mm -hmm. have a look at him and then, then discovered these injuries. Uh, Stuart Nairn also says, by the way, uh, Simon, that he, he would not have been able to get a reading. This now, is, now this, this is, is a, Stuart, a, a Stuart Nan, the, 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 the nurse. nurse. There's the quality. Nurse I don't want to confuse it between yeah. Stuart, yeah. the two Stuarts. Uh, you, you know, if he says he couldn't have got a reading from the digital thermometer, are we saying that he's lying? I mean, is, is that what the pathologists are saying, that he's lying? He said he wouldn't have been able to get a reading. The, 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 they're talk, you're talking about a horrific mm. uh, attack. Well, it, you know, and, and you would not have been able to get reading. So he's going to sit there for two hours and say nothing. I mean, it's doesn't, it doesn't add up. One thing that isn't disputed, I think, is the high levels of alcohol, cocaine and ecstasy which were found in his blood. Did he get them from you? No, I'm, I answered that at the inquiry. I used my rights at, uh, at the inquiry. Um, and uh, I, I answer those questions at the inquiry. Well, you didn't really answer them. No, I, I use I, I, it's my it's, it's my right. It's it's not it's, it's an inquiry. It's not a trial, and it, it started to be turned into a trial. I use my right, you know, sure. um, to, 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 to not to, 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 to not self-incriminate or incriminate anybody else with regards to 
any of those things. I mean, and, and, and I'm perfectly entitled to it. That doesn't make me guilty. No, no, no. But the trouble is, people might draw their own conclusions. You know, but, but, so but I mean, yeah, but that, 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 that's, that's the line that everybody went down, and it conveniently moves everybody away from uh, what should be investigated, which is, the, is, is, is where did he get the anal injuries? And that's what the furore was over. Sure. So but, when, but it, didn't, maybe, when, maybe, it, when maybe, it didn't suit anybody, they then suddenly start moving on to other areas. But the amount of drugs that were being consumed is the suggestion. The amount of drugs that he had in his body, the amount of drugs that maybe were being taken by other people, might have affected the fact that no one can remember what happened. Therefore, it's a relevant question. What do you mean, might have affected it? Well, if everyone was off their face, maybe no one can remember. Is everybody saying they were off their face? No, I'm. I'm asking you. Well, they? I don't know. I, I don't know how what the state of people were, in, individuals. I can't assess what anybody is. I mean, it was an, when 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 we had to re, uh, deal with uh, Stuart, we did, uh, everything was done that was possibly could be done. You know, I, mean, we tried, I, ran, I ran back in to get uh, Jonathan, who, who, who was a lifesaver. He came out. He worked on him. Justin worked on him. Simon and James pulled him out of the pool. You know. Can you swim? No, I can't swim. Your former wife says that uh, your mum taught you. My mum never taught me to swim. Uh, I was born in a council flat in Bermondsey. You know, with, you know, there's no pool. And I've never... I can stand up in water. Um, that's about it. I'm not a swimmer and I can't swim. I would have been a hindrance to the situation. And at the time we were standing there, at the time we were standing there at the side of the pool, when, when uh, Simon and James jumped straight in, I would have made the situation worse. And why Cheryl's gone down that road, uh, I, I feel very sad, and, 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 and I, I, I am sad about it. And second, that she should want, I mean, to try and get me down for what? Seven years for perjury? Or whatever? Locked away for saying that I can swim when I can't? And if people say, well, why have you got a swimming pool? The pool was always there and it was refurbished. And also for Cheryl to use the situation to what? Sell a book. To get involved and say, I want to know what happened. She doesn't, it was nothing to do with Cheryl. It wasn't even the same pool that was there at the original house. So she's talking about things she knows nothing about. And she is quite clearly lying about my swimming. She knows I can't swim. And if, to, if, I find that very sad, and, and I feel sorry for her, and I, I, I you know, I pray for her that she feels that the, the, the need to, to get involved like that. She hasn't got involved with the Lubbocks at all in any way. She's saying that she's concerned about it. She's never made any contact with the Lubbocks. You know, and I, 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 I am really saddened and, uh, by, by having to deal with that on top. And I, if I have to deal with it, I have to deal with it. You know, that's what I have to deal with. Like, I've had to deal with this whole situation the whole time. I mean, you know, with, with misreporting, um, um, I don't know how to describe... So, I mean, some of the reports and the way it was written, it, it was just awful. And, and mainly for the Lubbocks. And I've tried contacting Lubbock so that we can try and sort this out together to find out exactly what happened to Stuart. Instead of just making it very convenient to, everywhere there's a gap, fill it with the name Barrymore. Wherever there's a gap, just put the name Barrymore in. Um, you know, I've had, that, I've had to deal with that um, uh, sort of thing for, for, for years, but it never makes it any easier. And this certainly is the worst nightmare that I've had to deal with. There's no more uh, a nightmare than, than, than the Lubbocks have had to deal with, which is the loss of their son, you know? 223, you're listening to Five Live talking to Michael Barrymore. Let's take some travel. We'll be back.